In today's video, we're going to change the oil in the differential on my Prevo, and we're going to talk about what kind of oil you should use. I feel like every vehicle group, regardless of what type of vehicle it is, anything from a motorcycle up to a bus, there's two questions that come up a whole lot. One is what kind of oil to use, and the other one is what kind of tire to use, and people have very strong opinions on both of these subjects. As an engineer, in my opinion, it tends to be go with what the manufacturer tells you to put in because they've probably done testing that you haven't and that other people on the internet haven't, and they are generally going to give you, the, give you at the very least a good solid suggestion. Maybe you could come up with something better. But what got my interest in doing a video on this was that the manufacturer tech pubs were not exactly super clear on what oil to use, and the more I dug into it, it seemed like there really was a opportunity to optimize things a little bit. Now, the short answer to what kind of oil you should put in here is that it really doesn't matter a whole ton. Meritor, which is the axle manufacturer, allows for anything from a 75W90 up to an 85W140. And if you look in the Prevo manual, the oil thickness that they first recommend is an 85W140. Originally, I was going to just put in the 85W140 because that's what Prevo seems to recommend and call out initially. But I started thinking that maybe there was something more to this when I went to my normal oil supply places and they did, had virtually no 85W140. And even when I went to one of the local truck supply places, they didn't carry it at all. They only carried a 75W90. So that had me thinking maybe I should look into this a little bit more. And when you dig into the Prevo manual, but then also when you dig into the Meritor manual, which is ultimately referenced by Prevo, there's a service bulletin by Meritor that calls out different viscosities of oil that you can put into your rear axle, and it gives temperature ranges. Now, what's interesting is that basically anything from a 75W90 on up to an 85W140, there is no upper temperature limit that Meritor gives. It only changes the lower temperature limit, where 85W140 is at a plus 10 Fahrenheit, down to a minus 40 Fahrenheit for 75W90. So you might be saying, why, why does this even matter to me? Well, it probably isn't gonna matter a whole ton. And so you can just put in whatever oil you feel like that meets those specifications. But I decided to go with 75W90, and there were a couple of reasons for this. The first one is that even though I don't expect to be driving my Prevo in negative 40 Fahrenheit temperatures, I do figure I probably will be driving in colder than 10 Fahrenheit temperatures at some point in time. Part of how my engineering brain works is that I like to do little optimizations everywhere I can for efficiency when it's not going to impact anything else negatively. A 75W90 oil is going to be significantly thinner than an 85W140 oil. And what that thinner oil ends up meaning is that you all is that you have less horsepower that it takes to move the differential gears through that oil. And so what that means is that you're going to end up using a bit less horsepower to turn the differential, which gets you a little bit more efficiency. How much? Well, I went to see if there were any kind of research papers on this, and I found one that said between half a percent and one and a half percent at hot temperatures and one and a half to two and a half percent at cold temperatures, more efficiency could be gained with a thinner oil. And going from an 85W140 down to a 75W90, that's significantly thinner to the point where you might actually be able to notice a difference. I get about seven miles a gallon normally, so it might get me a tenth of a mile a gallon improvement. Do I really care about a tenth of a mile a gallon? No, but since I'm changing the oil anyway, if I can get a little bit more efficiency out of it, why not? It might also surprise you to know how often you are supposed to check your differential oil and change it. The manuals say that you should be changing your differential oil every two years or 100,000 miles, whichever comes first. In my case, I have a strong suspicion this is probably the original differential oil at about 23 years. Maybe it was changed at some point, but it almost certainly has not been changed within the past two years. And if it is original, my bus has about 100,000 miles on it. So one way or another, it probably should just be changed. Meritor actually even says that you should change it yearly, uh, but if you go with a synthetic oil that they recommend, and they have a list of ones that they recommend, I went with this mobile Delvac gear oil, which is on their list, they say that you can extend the change interval to three to four years. So I decided I'm gonna go with the oil that Meritor recommends since they made the axle. I'm gonna go with a thinner oil, which will get me a lower minimum temperature for operating per the book. 
and it might gain me a little bit more efficiency and fuel economy. But reality is you don't need to overthink it. Differentials and gearboxes in general tend to be some of the most forgiving mechanical devices when it comes to oil. Just don't put water in them. So now we're going to change the oil. A couple of notes before you start. There's about five gallons worth of oil in the differential, so you're either going to need to have a very large drain pan or you're going to need to at some point put the drain plug back in, drain out the oil that's in your drain pan, and then get the rest of it out. My typical drain pan I use is about three gallons, so I'm probably going to go with option two. You don't necessarily have to remove the wheels and tires. Mine are removed anyway because of other work that I'm doing at this point. So I'm going to just get all of my jug oil jugs ready. I'm going to get myself set up. Then we're going to drain it and put the new stuff in. I've got the last little drops draining out of the differential, but I wanted to show you the plug here. Whenever you drain a differential or any kind of gearbox, especially if there's a magnetic plug, you're going to have some kind of fuzz on it typically, and that's normal. Um, what you see on here is pretty pretty well expected. It's uh, you know just kind of smears off. There's nothing chunky uh, when you start to get chunks or things that look like recognizable pieces of gear teeth, that's when you want to be concerned. But this is just normal fuzz. Um, the fact that there's as much fuzz on it as there is probably supports what I was figuring, that this is very likely original oil. But um, it was in good shape. There wasn't any water in it. That's the other thing. If you have oil that comes out looking like a milkshake, that's really bad. So uh, once I'm convinced that uh, enough of it's drained out, I'm going to put this in and then we're going to uh, refill. The fill port, in case you couldn't see, is right here um, on mine, it's passenger side. Actually, it's really easy to access everything from here if the uh, wheels are removed, and if not, you can just kind of get up into this little area where you can sit. So I'm gonna get the strain plug in, and then we'll start filling back up. So when you're doing differential fluid on a car, you usually are only putting a couple of quarts in, and so just using your standard uh, quart type bottles like this is usually fine. Uh, when you've got five gallons worth, you probably want to do something that's going to be a little bit quicker, and you probably don't want to buy it by the quart. That's going to get expensive. They sell differential fluid in five gallon buckets, but for uh, this mobile fluid that I decided to use, it ended up being cheaper to just buy the one gallons. And what I did was I bought this uh, hand pump off of Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description. I'm liking it so far. I've put three gallons in. But you can see it's just got this clear hose and it's got a little hook that you can then put into the differential fill plug. And then you just uh, pump until it's filled up there. So like I said, I got a few gallons down. I'm going to get the remaining gallons in and then we'll be done. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. Like I said at the beginning, you really don't need to overthink what oil you put in your differential. For me, I like to do little tweaks where I can to improve efficiency and performance, and so going to a thinner oil where it's not going to cause damage, it's still going to provide sufficient protection, and if anything, it might actually provide more protection if I drive in some really cold temperatures, seems like the right thing to do. The fact that you see a lot of uh, semi-trucks also running 75W90 in what's effectively the same axle tells me that they're seeing the benefits of it as well. There's actually a service bulletin from Volvo Trucks that says specifically that if you don't use 75W90 in your differentials that you might see worse fuel economy than what they promise. So I think there's something to it and I'm kind of curious to see if I'll notice a difference or not. But realistically, if I see a difference, is it really from the differential oil or something in general? Sometimes when you have these really small improvements, you just have to do them and you know that somewhere they may make a difference. On the other hand, there's nothing wrong with 85W140. Like I said, just don't put in water. So as always, leave any questions or comments down below, and thanks for watching.